Jesus commanded his disciples to remember his sacrifice. He humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on the cross. Philippians 2.8Jesus and his disciples were in Jerusalem to celebrate Passover. Long ago, God delivered his people from slavery in Egypt. He sent 10 plagues to Egypt. And during the 10th plague, the firstborn of the Egyptians died. The Israelites smeared the blood of a lamb on their doorpost and God kept them safe. He passed over their houses. God said that once a year, the Israelites should celebrate the Passover to remember how he rescued them. He told his people when and how to celebrate. On the day when the Jewish people were supposed to kill the Passover lamb, Jesus sent Peter and John to get the meal ready. He said, go into the city and you will meet a man carrying a jug of water. Follow him. Jesus said that the man would go to a house and the homeowner would show Peter and John a large room upstairs with furniture in it. That was the place Jesus wanted them to get the Passover meal ready. So Peter and John did as Jesus said. When the Passover meal was ready, Jesus and his disciples reclined to eat. Jesus said, truly I tell you, one of you will betray me. The disciples were upset, but Jesus knew this was part of God's plan. Peter said he would never betray Jesus, but Jesus said Peter would deny him three times. Then Jesus took the bread, gave thanks to God for it, broke it, and then gave it to his disciples to eat. Jesus said, this is my body, which I am giving for you. Do this to remember me. Jesus took the cup and gave it to his disciples. They drank from it. And Jesus said, this is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for many. They sang a hymn together, and then they went out to the Mount of Olives. Jesus knew he would be arrested and would suffer. Then he would die on the cross to take the punishment for the sins of the world. On the third day, Jesus would rise from the dead. The New Covenant says that everyone who turns away from sin and trusts in Jesus' death and resurrection will be forgiven of his sins and will have eternal life. Hey boys and girls, welcome to BT Kids. We're so excited you're joining us. And today we have a special guest that's joining us for a second time already. This is Ms. Linda Reyes. She is our elementary uh, children's ministry assistant. And she gets to be with us today as we talk about our story for this day. And it's about a dinner. So it reminded me of Thanksgiving coming up next month. Mm -hmm. So Linda, in your house, uh, what was your favorite part of Thanksgiving? Getting together at my grandpa's. Um, the whole family would be there. Some would come down from Minnesota, Victoria, Texas, and... All over the place. Uh -huh. So about how many people did you have at your house? Oh, man, I had like 20-some cousins. <laughs> so the house was pretty Full. packed, Full. yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, uh, at our house, uh, uh, now that I'm married and have my boys, uh, my wife uh, had me build a table that sit 14 people. And that's enough for the boys and their wives, and we have a few extra chairs. But uh, I think my favorite part of Thanksgiving is the food. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I love, yeah. but I also do love sitting next to my next to you know whenever you sit in the table, you sit to your you sit next to the, your favorite people because you can talk while you're eating, and uh, and in today's story, uh, it just it, it was surprising how it's around a dinner table, and what happened. You know we. We talked about uh, Jesus coming into the city and he was uh, riding the colt. And, and now today, uh, Jesus has sent his disciples to go and prepare for the Passover. Mm -hmm. And the Passover is, remember those of you who, who've been watching for a while, uh, as we have our, our wheel back here, back in the book of Exodus, when, when the Israelites came out of Egypt the night before, mm -hmm. they celebrated the first Passover. 
And that's when, when they were in their homes and they were all dressed up, ready to leave, and they had put blood around the door, and it was the angel of God was coming in to basically kill the firstborn of every family. But where, whoever had the blood on the door, it passed them over. Mm -hmm. So the Passover. <laughs> For those of you who didn't know that's what it is, the Passover. <laughs> but be, be, since then, it became a, a, an, an, annual, an annual celebration. Mm -hmm. And the Jews always got together and they celebrated this. So Jesus sent his disciples to go get this ready. So they went up to the upper room and they set it up. And they had it all ready. And then Jesus comes in. Now, uh, back in the day, uh, whenever you visited somebody, uh, they, as you came into the house, they always did something for you. You know what that was? They would wash your feet. Now, here's the thing. The guest, like, if you came to my house, I wouldn't wash your feet. I had a servant. And if I had 10 servants, the one that was the lowest, the one that had the least amount of, uh, of, of influence or, or the least important one, they would wash the feet because it wasn't a good job to wash people's feet. But as they came into the room, Jesus got up. And, and the Bible tells us that he got a, 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 a fabric and put it around his waist. And he went one by one and began to wash the disciples' feet. Now, mm -hmm. they didn't want that because this is Jesus. Yeah. And they said, no, no, no. And Jesus told them basically, hey, if, if I can't do this for you, you have no part in my kingdom. And they said, well, Jesus, don't you wash my feet, wash my head, wash, my, wash, wash everything. And so Jesus washed their feet, and now they're sitting down. And as they're eating, Jesus begins to tell them what's coming next. And I remember the part where he says, one of you is going to betray me. And, and now, you're talking about sitting next to the person you love, you know, someone you grew up with, your cousins. And it's like you looking over and saying, hey, you're going to make up a lie about me. How would you feel about the person next to you if you knew they were going to do something bad to you? Especially family. It's, I, it, it's hard to... <laughs> To even it, think about that. It, I think it'd be hurtful. Yeah, definitely. And, and these are Jesus' best friends. I mean, they've been walking with him for three years. They're his disciples. And he says, one of you is going to betray me. And then they all go, was it me? Is it me? Is it me? And, and, and finally he said, it's, it's the one who dips his bread in, in the bowl with me. And, and Judas was there. Mm -hmm. And, and Je Judas knew what he was going to do. He goes, is it me? <laughs> and God looks at him, Jesus looks at him and says, go do what you're going to do. I, I mean, I, I just, I can't imagine, like, imagine sitting at the table and you were there and you heard me tell, or you heard Jesus tell Judas, go do what you're going to do. What are you thinking about Judas? You know, he's the one who's going to do it. <laughs> I mean, change your perspective, on right? Because you know, Definitely. this is a guy you walk with, you talk with. You probably, yeah, you all slept in the same room together whenever you travel outside. No rooms outside. You slept in, in in the same you know ground with them, and mm -hmm. maybe shared a blanket with him. And go, how how can you do this to Jesus? You know, we we've, we've been following him. We we know who he is. You know, how, how could you betray him? And that's what it was. It was a betrayal. And Jesus left, you know, and whatever they were feeling in their heart, we know that Jesus still loved him. Jesus still loved him. And throughout this whole night, uh, Jesus probably began to think about everything else that was coming. He didn't really, is it bothering you? Oh, now it is. <laughs> okay, you start right there again? Uh, start like maybe three sentences. Okay. Um, Throughout that night, you know, Jesus kept moving forward. Mm -hmm. it, didn't, it didn't affect him. I don't think so. It, it didn't show it in the Bible. But he knew that it was coming. And so they ate dinner, and then uh, they went their own way. And, of course, Jesus went to go pray. Mm -hmm. and, and he invited some of his disciples to go with him. And that's the next story. But I, I think that, that this story tells us that we don't know who's around us. And, and people are going to hurt us, but we still have to love them. We still have to care about them. 
And, you know, we don't know what happened to Judas. The Bible says that after this all went down, he went and he, he threw the money back mm -hmm. at, at, at the Pharisees and, and didn't want to do that. I don't know if he asked for forgiveness or not, but I, I mean, I can't imagine the feelings going through him when he realized what he had done. And it's a sad thing to think about, but you know, Judas betrayed Jesus. But boys and girls, every day we do things that betray Jesus. When we lie to our mom and dad, when we're mean to our brother or our sister, when we take things that aren't ours, we're, we're sinning just the way Judas did. But just the way Jesus still loved Judas, he still loves you. And there's nothing you can do that Jesus, that would stop Jesus from loving you. And that's the, my, one of my favorite things to say. There's, the Bible says nothing can separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus. And so boys and girls, here's the thing is, loving Jesus is one thing, but having a relationship with Jesus is another. We can all love Jesus, but that doesn't make us saved. The Bible tells us that we have to confess him as our Savior. So today, as you hear this story, if you don't have a relationship with Jesus, if you've never accepted Him as your Savior, man, ask your mom and dad, parents, if you're watching, and, and you may not know how to explain this to your kids, reach out to us here at BT. Uh, you can email me at isauro.medina at bt.church, and I'd love to walk with you as you explain this to your children. Or you can bring them in and we can talk to them together. It, there's nothing more important than knowing that you belong to Jesus and that he has saved you. Uh, we look forward to having you back here at BT. We know that day's getting closer. It is. That we're going to meet pretty, pretty soon. Uh, and our team is getting ready for new Wednesday nights. We're getting ready for Sunday mornings. But all we're missing is you guys. So we hope to see you soon. Thank you for joining us, and we'll see you next week.